Okay, it's George again. I'm back so soon with another video. Uh, you know, I just went through one on the crystal spiral, the Fibonacci spiral, and I realized that there's a lot more that I could talk about on that and that there was some fundamental um, issue with what I was presenting that I visualized and realized last night about the crystal spiral in relationship to the Fibonacci spiral. And I'll show you in the slides in just a moment. But I definitely wanted to get this video out. It's a good follow-up to clarify uh, where I was headed with the other video. In the previous video, I was talking about the crystal spiral, which is built on a cube that kind of gets larger and rotates in this dimension like this as it gets bigger. And I was taking that edge and putting it on its side like this. And I'll show you in the slides um, how that isn't actually congruent. Um, and so I just need to clarify a few things. So uh, stick with me. There's also some really exciting finds on the crystal spiral because that helped me visualize a new view for the crystal spiral anyway, which was my intention. So, you know, sometimes you've got to work through things and put things out and uh, start to get things moving and then, you know, greater insights uh, present themselves. So uh, let's share the screen and I'll uh, show you what I'm working on here. So yes, yesterday I was talking about the two different spirals, the Fibonacci spiral and the crystal spiral. And you know, this was the mathematics that these are based on. This is just a quick rehash. I, I encourage you to look at the other video if you haven't because um, it will give you a lot of background for this one. Um, but you don't need to. And in fact, there's more evolution of the crystal spiral in this one than the previous one. So if you're really interested in the crystal spiral, stick around for this one. So we've got um, the Fibonacci spiral here built on a numeric sequence that never returns to the zero point. So you're always adding up the previous two numbers to get the final number that you see here. So when we add up the eight and the 13 in these boxes, you get 21 and then 34 and then 55, 30, uh, 21, 34 is 55. That's how the Fibonacci spiral works. And it does create a spiral that expands. And um, if you look at these as cubes, rather than being flat, then it will expand and get larger and expansive as it goes. So that's a, that's a key element of how I'm introducing that same concept to the crystal spiral, because we can look at the crystal spiral here as being flat. And I've been working on how to visualize this as three-dimensional cubes. And that was what a lot of the video was before, and I'll continue to get in that. Now, the difference between the crystal spiral and the mathematics is that this is built on the doubling sequence. So when you get to one plus one, two, and then you take two, one and one, four. So it's always doubling uh, the previous number. So this adds up to four, two, one and one is four plus four, eight. So it's always connected to the zero point of source, right? And expanding out from that center point. Whereas the Fibonacci spiral is always consuming just the last two numbers and has lost that root connection. So that's one of the fundamental um, issues that people have with the Fibonacci sequence is that it uh, doesn't have that zero starting point. It leaves that and then goes on and on where the crystal spiral continues on in this, uh, this root connection to the zero point. So um, here are some of the statements that I made from yesterday and I had to put the big red X's on them because <clears throat> the, uh, the same expanding cube, uh, the same expanding cube spiral from three views of the same cube. So this was the crystal spiral. And in the previous video, I felt I had, was able to turn the spiral and turn it into the, uh, the spiral as if you were looking at it like flat, like a square but turning it more into the uh, hexagonal view where you're looking at it from the point down. And what I realized last night was that when this spiral is rotating it around, it's always on this flat surface. It's not 
um, spinning around like I'm showing here. So that was one of the key issues. So this spiral is not actually corresponding to this spiral the way uh, for like a one for one spiral like I was hoping it was. Now that doesn't mean that this spiral, which I was calling uh, the Metatron's spiral, that spiral still holds um, in its relationship. And the thing about that spiral is that, let me skip that one, is that it, uh, is that it uses the same mathematics that the crystal spiral is built on. And part of what I discovered with that is that the expanding spiral that I called Metatron's spiral here actually closely overlapped the Fibonacci spiral, but it was using completely different mathematics to get the same result. So, or a similar result, right? So you could see that the white one is following the Fibonacci spiral pretty closely as it goes around. And those uh, values for this spiral are built off of the way the crystal spiral was built. So that's how I kind of thought that I was still working with the same spiral dynamics, but really I was just working with the mathematics. So I, I, Metatron spiral, it's kind of its own thing now. It's, it's using crystal spiral uh, mathematics, but it's not actually a crystal spiral. It's something different. So great, Metatron spiral still in there. Um, and it produced a similar golden, uh, golden mean or Fibonacci-like spiral. But the key is it's these mathematics of these cubes that are expanding in size built off of root two. So the root two of uh, this cube here is, uh, of one is 1 1.4, and then root two of two, of four, I mean, is this, this number here. So that's each of these boxes are expanding in that size. So there's a little cube and a bigger cube and a bigger cube and a bigger cube, and that little cube is down in the center. So uh, now in the video yesterday, I was saying, well, check out Metatron Spiral, why it was so cool um, to me. And I was thinking at the time, well, this was just another view of the crystal spiral, but I realized that's not the case. However, now we've got a, a spiral that is uh, using crystal spiral mathematics that does connect it to the zero point and expands out with the same um, connection to source, and it's creating a golden mean spiral, you know, a Fibonacci-like spiral. So that's something to uh, contemplate and for me to look into a little bit further, because it's making a spiral that is based on different mathematics than what the Fibonacci spiral is on. It's based on that doubling sequence with using root two. And what I really uh, liked about it, now this is from a top view looking down at the spiral, is that as you're going along here, it's crossing these key points of like the seed of life circles, which are these within here. And then it's also crossing the flower of life circles, which are the 19 circles that it's produced at this point. And then it also crosses the fruit of life, the 13 circles that you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, those circles right there, that's the fruit of life. So it's also crossing that point. And, you know, as it goes further out, I don't, I haven't extended the, um, the flower of life pattern here out that far, um, but I'm sure it's going to hit some key points out there. And I was mentioning yesterday that that's the Tesseract view, the Metatron's Tesseract. So if I was creating my own, um, as I am creating my own kind of language to work with here, I've got a Metatron's Tesseract, I've got a Metatron spiral that kind of goes with that. And, uh, and, and the Metatron spiral is built on different uh, mathematics than the Fibonacci spiral. So uh, that's kind of cool. But I wanna get back to the crystal spiral because that was the main piece that I really wanna cover up and clarify within this video. So how did I come to this realization all of a sudden that the two spirals that I presented in the previous video are actually different spirals. And it came down to, once again, examining the, the cube shape and the eight around one. So in the crystal spiral, let's go back and take a look at that briefly. Now you see that it's, it's going like that, right? 
And that's going like this around and around and around. Well, there's another view now, if we take that spiral and we turn it this way, right? Rather than keep rotating it on its axis like this, we now take the spiral and say that it's gonna do that and we're gonna be looking at it from the side as it does that. And what's that spiral going to produce if it's spinning this way, okay? So that is where I went with that. And I'll, I'll move out of this share in a minute, this screen share in a second, because we're basically not dealing with the uh, hexagonal view like you see here where it says eight around one. We're dealing with the cube, but now we're dealing with it rotating in a different axis and there's a key drawing that I didn't include in these three and it looks like this over here. So now we're going to build a spiral off of this view and just so we could uh, really get a sense of what that looks like that will once again expand from that size that's the largest one that's down here on the page. That's this size uh, sphere. But of course, it's gonna be a replication at different scales, and it's gonna be rotating from a cube to this, from a cube to this back and forth from the, that view. So that's what we're gonna build that off of. So once again, just so you could see up close, there's the square view. Now the crystal spiral as viewed from radiating out like that, that's the top view I'm calling it, that's gonna be rotating like this around and it's creating the spiral as those cubes get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's creating a spiral that kind of goes out. Now I'm gonna take that same cube and I'm gonna say, well, let's say that spiral is happening on top, right? And I'm now gonna rotate it this way, okay? So we're gonna have a view in there that's gonna have the width of the cube this way and this line in the center and there's the little sphere in the middle, okay? And that's that. So we're gonna say, we're gonna rotate this around like this instead of like this. So it's still, it's two different axes that I'm working on. We've got the, the way we see the crystal spiral presented is usually going like this. Now I'm gonna say, well, if I'm looking down at the cube like this, and, but I'm actually now sideways and it goes like this and gets bigger, what's that gonna look like? So that's the key visualization that made me rethink all this and come back and do this video. So I have some new spirals of the crystal spiral that actually now are the crystal spiral from that view. So I'm, I'm thankful that I did complete what I intended to do and found what the, uh, the, the puzzle to the solution here, the solution to the puzzle. Um, and I guess I found the puzzle to the solution at the same time. Um, so here we go. This is now what the crystal spiral, remember? That's that view coming out. Now visualize this like little box in the middle here. And as this gets bigger, it's coming towards you and spiraling out until it gets to there. So it's kind of like if my finger were back here at the little box and then it went like that. So it's, that's the view. Now here it is on the same box. So th these, these two are connected now and we've, instead of gone in that uh, clockwise motion like this, we're now gonna take that cube and we're gonna spin it this way and those boxes are gonna get bigger. And it makes a really nice spiral, zero, one, two, three, four. So now it's hitting the edge of the cube. So that five corresponds to that cube there. These are a little tight for you to see, but here's five, there's six. That's where it hits the blue corner. There's seven as it kind of arcs back and hits this corner. And then there's eight as it swings all the way back. So that's on the back side of the cube now um, that it's done this complete turnaround and kind of spiraled up and out and went over there. So that's, you know, just like a spiral that's, you know, from the side, it looks like just a squiggly line, but visualize that as this, and it's to the same dimensions uh, as this, this one on the left here. And these will correspond with those boxes. Let me just, zoom in for you so you can really get a better sense of the two together. Okay, so here's the zero one, it's hitting the little black cornered box and that's where it hits it here. And then it's gonna be going out and hitting to the uh, 
orange cornered box over here, or the red box over here, and that's where it hits this one over here. Uh, these are a little tight in here, so it's coming up. I think you'll really start to see it when it hits the yellow box. So that yellow one is now directly pointing towards you, and then it swings back up to the five, to the six, to the seven, five, six, seven, and loops back around, back to the eight. So there's the crystal spiral in a new view. And it's a significant view because it, it allows us to look at it in different ways in the other slides. Now that's what I was hoping to do with this uh, diamond view of the Metatron spiral that I was working on. And as I was rotating that spiral around, it kind of made this big wide loop as it was touching the corners. And that was connected to these boxes over here as it was spinning around following that view. And that's the one that creates the more of the Fibonacci like um, spiral. Now I tried to, uh, this is a kind of attempt to make the hexagonal view of the cube rotating around on its axis uh, with the cube then all of a sudden looking like kind of like a this type of view. And it's, it's a difficult one to kind of capture. So we're going from the hexagonal view and then we're rotating it in an angle like this. So it, it's kind of wonky, but I tried to do the crystal spiral as if it were from hexagonal view, but it really doesn't hold because this cube now is, if it's in hexagonal view, there's hexagonal, it's actually spinning like this. And that was the main problem that I realized was that that cube couldn't spin that way. So let me just show you that. So if this is the hexagonal view and my fingers on the S. Now that, that's just like this, right? Now, if it's a hexagon and you're looking at it as a hexagon from the top down, that's just basically spinning on that axis like this. So it's not actually spinning like um, around like I had it with that kind of being a fixed center point like this, the, the middle point. It's now spinning like this. So the two views for the crystal spiral, uh, I mean, it could be doing all this spinning, but you know, the ones that I'm gonna work with are this one. Now it's just the new view and this one that's going like this. And that's enough for us to um, work with for the rest of the images I'm gonna show you. Okay, let's do the uh, back to the screen share. So that was an attempt, this one over here, to kind of get that spiral in, kind of coming from the side of the cube in. But we're just gonna deal with a frontal view and a, 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 a top view, um, which is a frontal view, I guess, and uh, the top view up over here is this is kind of spiraling down from the top. This is more like a side view, and this is a top view. It really depends how you wanna view it, because when I, then place this back, remember on this person, and this is the image of the crystal spiral, because as I mentioned, people are um, in the spiritual community who uh, like to look at geometric shapes and see how we are contained within this holographic universe. They often attempt to, as I do, you know, uh, look at that form and structure around our bodies. How does it fit? And, you know, I do a lot of that type of work. So I'm, here's the crystal spiral, and so I needed to find out, well, I'd like to find out how the crystal spiral looked in different views geometrically. So if the crystal spiral here now is centered on the, centered on the heart and now the cube is flat uh, again, you know, and it's flat in, in these images over here, but now we're rotating it this way. So the cube is now spinning around us, you know, like this. Okay, so it's spinning around us like that. In this other view here, the cube is spinning like this. So, you know, in terms of your energy field, you know, you'd have a spiral, you know, this cube going around you like this, which, you know, is why I tried to uh, first bring it back to the normal diamond-like view that the star tetrahedron and the cube spin on like this, you know, because that's normally what um, we see in, in this type of research is that this, star tetrahedron will spin around like that. And I was creating this type of spiral that go this way. Well, now we're 
in order to see the spiral going up and out the center here, we have to take it from a flat view and spin it around like this. So it's completely flat, but the, the boxes themselves, the cubes are getting larger as it goes. So that starts to create this arc that will continue to go um, at, around. So you can have this, this type of view, or if you, oops, we have that type of view, or we can take this view here and put that on like it is in the image. And then we have that. Now that's then spiraling out from your center out towards the, out away from you. And that then is like spinning around like this. So it, it could be all of those, you know, there doesn't have to be one or the other uh, in terms of how the energy is moving. There, it's way more complex than we're presenting here, but at least we're able to look at a that same spiral from a different view and consider that type of movement in the spiral. And there's other reasons why it may be important to consider that. Um, when I first started looking at the crystal spiral, this version of it, I immediately saw it as the, um, the cube compound of the octahedron and the cube. So the octahedron, I'll have to back out here so I could show you these, this is a form that looks like this, cube octahedron, uh, cube with the octahedron going through it. And this is the root of the uh, cube octahedron. If you were to slice off all these pieces, you would be left with the cube octahedron with the octahedron pointing up, okay? I don't have an image of that here, um, but the reverse of that is the rhombic dodecahedron, and I'll show you that when you connect these points, it creates a 12-sided uh, diamond-shaped figure, which I have right up here. That's going to come down in a moment. So, you know, when I first looked at this image, I said, wow, that, you know, if you look at it this way, it could easily just be that uh, octahedron and cube expanding like that. But the visualization didn't work because the octahedron is always uh, in the center point and the cube is out here. So this the, the movement of it was all wonky in, in how I was visualizing it. But that doesn't mean that we can continue expanding the spiral of cubes and have the octahedron part of that ex expansion. So, you know, if we take this image here of the octahed octahedron, so the octahedron is the point, and now that's the cube, at this view, right, this new view that I'm showing you from the side, rather than just looking like a box, it's at that view. And now you have an octahedron popping up through the top. And that's the eight-sided octahedron. So let me just uh, back out of this again and show you a little something I created that uh, might, with the burdock. Hopefully these will uh, show up okay on here. So there's the octahedron, right? Eight-sided. And now that's now popping through the cube. So I created a, another example of this out of the burdock. So you could see what that looks like with uh, the cube at the center. So here's the cube, these points here, one, two, three, four, those four points. And that's now the cube. And what we've done with that is we've turned it like this. Okay, so here's the points of the octahedron, one coming right towards you. Here's another one here, and here's another one there. And now we're just turning that like this. And here's your cube face that way. And now your octahedron is more like a, like a pyramid, right? So here's one point, two points, three points. See, I'll put all three fingers on them if they could. Here we go, just like this. Those are the points of the octahedron facing up. So those, uh, that's, um, that's now we can have, rather than a cube just being flat, you know, and just spinning around on a no, no, no point, you know, it's just like this. With this, we had the octahedron popping up through the top. And now all of a sudden we have another way to build out the same crystal spiral and the crystal spiral, in fact, actually kind of goes around the edges of that 
pyramid shape as it gets bigger and bigger. So there's um, some really neat connections to the octahedron. And I've always wondered about the octahedron and why, why not that be, you know, the pinnacle of our energy field? You know, it feels like when I was visualizing that within me for a while, I was always flipping this octahedron up and spinning it around this way. And I could see it really clearly that way. So, you know, it's another system to explore. And so here, here we go. Here's the spiral as it moves through. And in the next images, well, let me, let me show you the rhombic dodecahedron because that is what that looks like. So the rhombic dodecahedron is now connecting those points together. And if we drag that over top of the, uh, of the, the compound of the cube and the octahedron here, that's what it would look like over that. Connects those points and has this diamond-like shape. And I, I forgot to show you one of those, but that, that's one of these little paper ones that I did right here. That's the view you're looking at. So that's uh, another, another way to look at this is instead of having the cube facing up, being the pinnacle and the octahedron spinning that way. Now, now we're actually using the octahedron as the top point. And we can still do this expansion of the spiral. And I'll show you in the next uh, slide here. I have to really back out far on this one because there's a few things in it. Okay, so now I've really gone um, pretty large with the expansion of those spirals. So here was our little person in the uh, cube. I think I could go a little closer for you. More detail. Oh, not that close. Okay, yep. So this is that side view that I was just showing you. And I've got the, I extended the spiral because the original one I showed you was only to about right here. So we stopped at that point and then, um, so we had one through eight points just up to this. So at that point, it was very easy to just expand that spiral out further to the next point here, to the next point here, till it hits the cube there, till it hits the cube there as it's going around. And that's now looking like this spiral right here. So that point right there is this one. So that's looped all the way around. So this cube would be facing you on that side view, just like this. It would be right here pointing towards you. And the nice thing about this is that this is built with the octahedron in it. And I just really think it's neat to see where the spirals as they're extended. I put one on the bottom and one on the top to show that as the spiral is going around, this one's coming up from the bottom and this one's coming down from the top or out from the bot, out from the center, zero point out where they're gonna land. And they're just moving around the outside of the octahedron shape as it kind of rotates around following the curvature of those points. So I just think that's really a fascinating, neat way to look at the crystal spiral from this view um, rather than this other view, which really changes the dynamics of that whole movement because uh, the, the spiral, the, the cube would be like, you would be in, spinning around like this rather than having some, the ener something spinning around you like this, you know, like it, it would be like the earth, uh, the earth's axis would be more like a bowling ball rolling towards you rather than it spinning like this. So, you know, it's just a different way to um, view and I, I, people have insights to the, the reasoning behind having the star tetrahedron or the cube point up or the octahedron point, you know, play around with that and feel into that and see what that feels like with the octahedron as part of this design. So here is the uh, biggest expansion all the way around. And this can just keep building on and on and on. And it could build off of any point within here. So we could start here and we could start off this little cube. We could start off of this cube. That's how it's all built. So every point in space 
will have that en energy uh, ability. The zero point is in every point in space within this small little example of uh, many, many little cubes all over the place that are, all contain um, spheres that are all touching against one another and interlocking. So I have one more slide here, and I think that that's going to be the it for this uh, portion of where we were going with this, because within the uh, there's another piece that comes with the crystal spiral, and it's called this uh, Cathar grid, which is considered to be the uh, true tree of life to to some people who are very much into following that line of thinking about the crystal spiral. Because you can easily create this tree of life type pattern when you place this right over the key spots of where it's going to hit along the points. So I took that tree of life um, cathar grid that's built, built off the crystal spiral and I placed it over top of the one with the octahedron, which essentially is the same shape, but it's not actually in three dimensions the same. You know, we, we're dealing with cubes, right? We're dealing with a cube here and this bigger cube, which looks like a cube, but it's actually an octahedron, which means that it's sloping away from you like this. It's going back. So it's not a cube, although, from a distance, it appears to look like a replica of that. But remember, it's from a different view. This is a side view of it. That's the top view. If you're looking at a pyramid down, this would now be the pyramid looking at it from the side. And this is why I just got that fascinating, I mean, it just got a real feeling of like, here's a pyramid and it could be a 51 degree pyramid. This is not, this is built on the octahedron. Um, but this is a pyramid with the energy flowing from the center point up and around around the top of it or from the top going back in. You can play around with this a lot of different ways. So I said to myself, well, maybe this cathar grid, this tree of life, remember, this is now flat um, in, in its expansion. It's b ballooning out. But a tree of life, you know, I picture looking at one from a side view, right, rather than looking down at the tree like this. So if I took the tree of life and I placed that, this tree of life version, and placed that over this octahedron expansion, including the cubes uh, and all the crystal, dynam crystal spiral dynamics with the spiral in this view, you know, some really neat things start to play out in how the points of the spiral continue to hit all the key spots of the cube as it gets closer into the center. So I really, you know, my next exploration will be exploring what the actual geometry is of this crystal uh, spiral tree of life tree grid that we're looking at here. Um, I have a feeling that it looks like it's going to be expanding from smaller cubes and getting larger from the center and kind of following that pattern. And, you know, the neat thing is, is we could take that rhombic dodecahedron and place you know the whole the whole thing within that of that root shape and the rhombic dodecahedron um, is is an excellent shape because it's one that you could place together with other ones like it and completely fill an area with the rhombic dodecahedron shape it's a, a space filling um, space filling shape so this one can easily be one that is um, like an underlying pattern of all the underlying connection within the universe. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover with the spirals. I'm really happy that I was able to, you know, find the uh, top view of the crystal spiral. I cleared up the things about the Metatron spiral in this, which is in itself a different type of spiral than the Fibonacci spiral, although the spiral is similar to the Fibonacci spiral, it really is built on totally different mathematics that built it, built on the crystal spiral mathematics. And I was able to go over the crystal spiral 
and the, uh, the other view of the crystal spiral and look at that within the energy field. So for those of you interested in the um, spirituality related to this, into the ascension mechanics and, and this new system of crystal grid, crystal grid, grid spiral, I hope that you found this uh, really interesting. And uh, I'd like to hear some of your feedback and comments if this is something that really gets you uh, going. So um, have a great rest of your day and uh, thanks for watching the video and much love and peace to all.